Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone from Cybersecurity Magazine. Uh, today, the topic for discussion is 5G security. And together with me uh, from Boch, Patrick. Hey, Rajiv, how are you doing? Good, good, how are you? Good, thanks. And uh, Anand Prashad uh, from Japan. Hey, Anand, how is it going? Hi. Great. So, uh, Anand, uh, let's just start uh, this conversation about one of the main overviews uh, of 5G security um, and how is it uh, transitioning from 4G or a legacy network? Uh, I, I think uh, we should uh, first uh, talk about uh, what what is 5G as a whole and then go into the security aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you look at 5G, um, this is the era when you are talking about a, a mobile network uh, and solutions uh, uh, or functions of the network be becoming completely virtualized and thus cloud-based um, from radio uh, onwards uh, to the core network to all the services uh, uh, ca can become virtualized. At the same time, you get much higher data rate and you get different kind of IoT services, you know low latency uh, IoT services and then very high speed and um, which have uh, really time critical like uh, vehicles and stuff like that. So you have a whole variety of things and then mission critical and so things will also come on top of it. That is 5G, yeah. If you want to add something to it, otherwise I can go towards the security aspect. Now let's go to the security aspect, I think, because I think that's uh, what's interesting. So, so now, uh, if you if you look at this uh, uh, 5G era, where where you uh, uh, if you look at the past, there were boxes, uh, and each box could have its own hardware security and stuff like that. And now you're going to a virtualized era. Uh, so, when you talk about 5G, there are many use cases. There is an API that's open to everything. Uh, there is a virtualization, and uh, there is a mobile communication 5G part on top of it. Yeah. Um, so. Security for everything becomes important. Let me just, uh, uh, so you, the virtualization security, the use case security, the API security, the um, 5G, the mobile communication part security, that all of these becomes important. So let me just touch uh, in this discussion today on the specific 5G, the mobile application part actually, that's uh, on top of the, all this uh, infrastructure. So you were asking Rajiv, uh, going from 4G, to 5G, uh, I think we had that discussion as well, Patrick, about that point. So uh, if you talk uh, about uh, 4G, and there has been quite some research and showing issues there. If it, so 4G is a very secure network, but still, we saw the issue with interconnect, um, the SS7 and diameter signaling related issues. Uh, the IMSI, that's a, a subscriber identity going in clear, and therefore different kind of uh, attacks are visible. Um, and uh, there are other things, but uh, uh, one more point that was shown by researchers was that because the user plane uh, part is, uh, doesn't have integrity protection, so they could change it and then uh, perform different kind of attacks. So in 5G, uh, the, the thing's still happening, but the base of 5G that came out by 3GPP, that's a mobile communication standard, and the security group at 3 uh, there are several enhancements. Uh, let me just uh, pick a few things. Of course, for when it comes to interconnect security, the signaling part, uh, the, we have a proxy now uh, there. It's a, a, a giving you the interconnect security. Yeah. Then after that, uh, in when it comes to 5G, from the first message onwards, you can uh, give security protection. Yeah. And in terms of identity, when it comes, there is a sushi, the concealed identity. So you have public private key pair with which the identity is concealed. Yeah. So again, that part is secured. The user plane also has integrity protection. Okay. So that again, the issue from 4G is secured. And there are many, many, uh, uh, several other uh, enhancements. Uh, um, let's look at the authentication part. So you have unified authentication in 5G. So you can have different kind of authentication solutions that can be run over a mobile network. That's something novel and therefore that allows, for example, uh, vertical networks, IIoT, if you want to call as well, uh, for these also provide to provide their own authentication mechanism. Yeah. Uh, I think let me stop at this point uh, as a highlight of 5G, 4G, 
uh, and then moving towards uh, 5G security. Yeah. So and then maybe maybe go into uh, uh, one question which which came to my mind. Uh, you mentioned uh, PKIs uh, for 5G security to uh, encrypt um, identities and I assume also data. Um, we had we recently had some articles on uh, quantum uh, uh, quantum cryptography or post post quantum cryptography. Uh, is it easy to change the encryption in 5G? Uh, is it um, e so in terms of uh, uh, let's look back when we were doing the work we did think about quantum uh, computing coming in play and then the attacks that might happen yeah uh, of course uh, the fact is still that uh, the quantum computing and the attacks that can practically happen should take time but you never know how the technology enhance enhances we think the algorithms that are there should be uh, fine, but uh, if not, if issues even happen, you always can have some genius person who cracks uh, any algorithm, not only the quantum thing coming in. Uh, the system is designed such that you can change algorithms. Yeah, cryptographic algorithms uh, for confidentiality, for integrity protection, for authentication, all of these can be changed. Yeah. Okay, that's, so you have a certain, uh, uh, what was it called, uh, cryptographic agility, right? That's, uh, I think, the term. Yeah, if you want case. to see that. Yeah, so currently yeah. Uh, there are two uh, algorithms uh, worldwide that can be used worldwide or is used worldwide, and the third one that China also wanted. So AES, no 3 g and Zook, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, that can be replaced and a new ones added as well. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, so uh, there's a lot of changes from 5G to 4G. Um, and I understand that also makes the security topics, which were in the past only relevant for uh, ICT security, IT security, information technology, uh, relevant for 5G. Um, what, is the, what is the direct impact for the user uh, from 5G with that increased security? Yeah, so uh, you're right. 4G to 5G, we did do quite some enhancements. And with the changes, uh, the, there's other things like uh, key refresh and uh, different keys being used. In terms of user, I mean, uh, you, you do get, get better and enhanced security. That's, that's what it is at the end. It's not just the network. Yeah. For example, if signaling security uh, issues would happen, uh, of course, uh, most operators have a protection for that. They had to add extra things in the network. Uh, if issues would happen, then a user, for example, could be followed, yeah, worst case, yeah. And since the security solution is already there, the user, it, that will not happen, yeah. You, you, attackers will always find new ways, and of course, we who are trying to say we'll find better ways to secure as well. So, users at the end have enhanced security, and uh, now you said IT-related combination, yes, you're right. I mean, we are talking about a mobile network that becomes a cloud native. Yeah? That's how things are designed, uh, using uh, standard uh, IT specific protocols. And therefore, uh, which makes the whole playground very interesting business wise. But uh, if you look at it from security perspective, uh, therefore you have to consider IT security aspects as well. You know, in the virtualization, virtualization security aspects and things like that, you'll have to bring them in place. So. So, uh, more from the perspective of the user, uh, so those who are following this uh, podcast, mm -hmm. this recording, um, what should they be perceiving from, uh, from the new uh, generation uh, of mobile communication? Uh, what are the changes, uh, or what, are the, uh, what should they be implementing in their devices or in their communications? Mm -hmm. As obviously we are talking about virtualization of multiple yeah. things. Actually, if for the users, uh, the virtualization part should not have any impact, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you look at a user space, um, you know, but just a moment. So the way the way I look at it is because there is so much news on five G and there is so much news on cybersecurity, there's a perception, of, or rather there would be a perception in the minds of the users, what is it they can do mm. to ascertain that they have, uh, they're secured. There's okay. a lot of 
a lot more things are connected now in their house, okay. for instance. Maybe maybe let's let's define what user is and and a lot more things connecting and a lot more uh, common ways of connectivity. Of course, increase the footprint of attack. Yeah, that's the point. Mm -hmm. Now let's let's look at uh, users uh, on different perspective. So uh, let's see one side uh, in a traditional sense, user or con consumer like you and I using our mobile phone. Yeah. Uh, Enhanced security in the in, in the network and uh, uh, over 5G. Of course, everyone benefits with that. Uh, but there will be people. You and I will also be using uh, devices, smart devices, even faster or things like that. Certainly, then the the network uh, can the service provider can protect your services. Yeah, that you're using on the device. But at the end, it's on you to protect. Yeah, so you should have security solutions in your device. Or, right. or take care that you get the services from the uh, service provider. Next thing is uh, that potentially the enterprise, it's also traditional business, enterprise connects to the operator as well for services. And for that, again, uh, uh, they should consider security or, this, uh, or the operator service provider should consider security for them. Now, uh, let's look at the user differently. Now, the user is also potentially a business partner, yeah? And and therefore the concept of slicing comes in, and you can do, uh, slice the network and say one car company starts using it for its cars, uh, one um, a motorcycle company or a factory starts using it. Uh, look at it there. Um, my advice to them is uh, actually, uh, depending on the size of the business, they should in general be away from the overall um, um, network management. Yeah, there's a lot of things they'll get into completely different things. Uh, but if you look at security perspective, the work needs to be done, but they could use the current database for authentication, for example, their identity management, for example, and use it over the 5G slice. Yeah, they, they, they'll have to work on that. How exactly it should work, uh, how the settings should happen, the details uh, are still to be taken care of. But the five G provisions gives you provisions to use that, yeah. So that's uh, something beneficial from the uh, industrial IoT or vertical uh, or private network perspective, yeah. And then if you think about uh, getting into the overall cloud kind of solution that uh, Patrick was saying, and therefore the different uh, existing solutions come in. Uh, there are solutions out there which you could combine and get better, better, better visibility and better control uh, as well. Yeah. So these, uh, if you look at the space, user space like this, then there's the API part where, where you uh, connectivity will come with partners. API security certainly needs to be considered uh, to the extent of uh, what are the business logics and things like that. Yeah. You mentioned a private network. I, th I think this is something fairly new for 5G as well, that essentially you have the possibility to set up your own network as an enterprise. Yeah. Um, how much uh, effort is it compared to, say, a regular uh, network? I mean, um, a lot of this stuff can probably be done using Wi-Fi for enterprises, couldn't it? Yeah, so... Uh I had some discussions on this, so that's that's not uh, specifically security, but if you look at uh, um, industrial IoT uh, or uh, such things, then Wi-Fi can provide you service. I completely agree with that. I worked on Wi-Fi when the word Wi-Fi was actually defined. And uh, the, the point being that as soon as you go to unlicensed uh, spectrum, that means uh, issues can happen, yeah? But that's a radio part of it, uh, and uh, if you the and the delay side with the new Wi-Fi and with the, with 5G, of course, uh, uh, there, there is more delay, to, uh, much higher data rate, and things like that. So uh, things can be taken care of. So there, of course, uh, you might say there is there isn't uh, much difference. Uh, but from security perspective, I haven't checked latest uh, Wi-Fi security enhancements. Yeah. I do know from the mobile perspective, uh, mobile communications perspective, uh, mobile communication systems, uh, because of the business size and the impact on the society being the critical infrastructure, of course, we have always considered uh, enhanced security for it. Yeah. So that could be uh, that could be a simplistic answer from my side on that aspect. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, 5G. Uh, I know. I know that you, uh, Anand, has been uh, busy with the 
sort of first 5G network or first fully virtualized 5G network in, in, in Japan from uh, Rakuten Mobile. Um, other countries are not that far uh, yet. I mean, I mean, if I look at Germany, I know that there are some proof of concepts, but I don't think any uh, 5G network is really live for the, for the broad masses. Yeah. Uh, how much time do you think uh, will 5G take to sort of take over the world like 3G or 5G has uh, 4G has done? Yeah, so I, I need to correct you over there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, now I have my own company, Winnovator, and a few months back I was a size of Rakuten Mobile. Uh, and uh, the, uh, mo the, the, the network is what we were saying is 5G ready, but 4G was deployed actually. Yeah. Okay. But it was all cloud native, so that you're right about that. And when you talk about being cloud native and all those stuff, then uh, basically you're talking about same thing as what 5G is telling to bring in, yeah. And only the radio part becomes different. There are some terminology and st stuff like that that does become different as well. But okay, l let them aside. So in that sense, you're right. Um, when it comes to uh, 5G taking over the world, I, I think that should move quite fast. When 3G after the 4G came, 4G. Uh, rapidly took over. Um, in terms of uh, uh, 5G, what is out there today? There is 5G is already out there today in many countries. Eh? In Japan, also you have uh, the three, at least the three uh, uh, operators, existing operators. They have deployed 5G, but they, uh, you do you initially NSA, what it is called NSA, is non-standalone. Basically, you use the 4G uh, core network, yeah, and therefore. Uh, you have some enhancements on 4G, 4G security to allow this non-standalone 5G to have security keys as well and be secure. But the, the, the discussion that we got into was 5G standalone, yeah, where the core and everything is uh, cloud-based and that's where you're talking about Rakuten Mobile, but there's also Dish Networks, I think is discussing the same, but there are actually others who haven't been talking much about it, but they also have uh, at least the core in, in the cloud. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, time-wise, difficult to say. Depends on adoption, but I think it will be faster than uh, probably 4G. Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> 4G took quite a while to take over here in Germany. I know that. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do you anticipate? I know we are moving sort of away from the security aspect, but I think it all sort of leads into it. Um, do you think the lifespan of 5G, so to speak, before 6G or whatever the next generation is called, would be, uh, would be longer simp uh, because of the changes in business model, everything being so much more dynamic as opposed to 4G, which was pretty straightforward. I mean, you just have a better technology, uh, you know, higher bandwidth, and you have the same guys providing the services. Yeah, so uh, in the industry, it has been that every 10 years, a new mobile communication standards come, standard comes, yeah. And standard comes uh, because technology changes and there are also market demand. Yeah? It's not just technology, yeah. Uh, 5G, uh, the design itself is extremely modular, yeah. Uh, you can just take one piece and replace it with some 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 other vendor, for example, one small part of the... Uh, uh, network, yeah, and but of course for that management becomes co complex. But you're right; uh, it does allow a lot of flexibility. That is the beauty uh, as we have come to 5G. But uh, at least my personal thinking is that when you uh, you will still come to 6G in the same cycle of 10 years. I do think that uh, 5G itself is, as we are speaking, is being enhanced. Yeah, newer technologies are being added, new solutions are being added, new services are being added. And if you want to see, uh, you went from, uh, we went from 3G to 4G, for example. Yeah. And we came up with new technologies. Uh, IP could go to, for the first time towards your mobile device to the end. Yeah. The I, IP address, I'm saying. Uh, because the technology was there, this could be done. Yeah. There was no voice actually in, uh, in 4G network as it was designed. Yeah. We moved away from that. When you ca came towards the end of 4G, it has IoT, it has, which includes V2X, and it has mission critical and everything. So what is the difference from the first step of 5G? It is almost all the same thing, yeah? Yeah, only with much more enhancement, everything is integrated. You're not adding on top on the side. 
now we are seeing many technologies coming here yeah? ai blockchain and or dlt if you want to say and all the other things i i think that in this 10 years time demands will increase uh, 5g will again have patches and and to take care of patches you'll have to have a new architecture that takes care of all these things together and in 10 years time you'll come to 6g again uh, and pretty sure the market will also demand for that yeah. okay that, that that makes sense um now uh when you mentioned that IT security, information technology security, and, and mobile security are sort of growing together, what are the uh, most important aspects to sort of lead over to you know, the next uh, conversations like this, uh, which we're planning? What are the most important security aspects uh, we will need to talk about uh, considering 5G? Um, I think uh, le let's look at the whole picture at a very high level specific uh, we should cover uh, 3gpp 5g security what it is yeah um, and that's a whole bunch of things that i talk about authentication is there and then interconnect security is there and things like that um, then uh, we should cover the virtualization part uh, we be it what is called uh, um, virtual machines or containers yeah um, at a high level and then after that of course the scenarios that are there IoT or IIoT aspects, yeah. Uh, then you have the API related aspect and then connecting to this different partners, okay. And uh, we, sh uh, we should not forget the identity management part as well, yeah. So all this is actually qu quite big uh, and I can go into a few other aspects, but uh, for example, when, it, when we talk about virtualization, then we can talk about the core part and the radio part and then the business enhancements that are happening towards edge computing and putting some services there as well. So that also became becomes an interest, interesting part as well, yeah. Okay, very good. So you want to use uh, the words uh, Open RAN, Virtual RAN, MEC, MEC, and things like that, yep. Yeah. Um, so we're noticing, uh, so uh, the virtualization is definitely a key aspect of it, obviously. And uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, we are noticing players like Facebook, and I'm sure there are others who are so in some form stepping into providing uh, network services as well. Um, what, do you, what do you understand from that? Uh, where is that heading? Is, are there other players? And is my, is my understanding correct in, in this aspect? In terms of uh, other, we are moving quite far away from security. Eh? <laughs> now, why why I'm getting to that, I'll explain to you because in my mind it sort of adds all everything adds sort of back to security because until the previous generation uh, we had incumbents essentially who were providing these solutions and the security was essentially in that ecosystem. Now mm -hmm. we have number and number of players who can step in and provide services network services right how do you actually unify all of this into a single security uh, uh, across all the networks yeah um so it all depends how you look at these things if these players become a service provider they have to consider holistic security that i call that i say yeah mm -hmm. a complete thing uh, be it uh, their physical security they'll have to consider that or enterprise security or mobile network and other services yeah and uh, if if they are just partners to any of the mobile operate any of the operator be it a, a vertical uh, or private network provider then they'll have to cons uh, consider security for for that kind of connectivity and communication that's happening so there, there are many different aspects um, that needs to be considered. I certainly agree with you. What is happening is with that, the footprint increases. That's yes, beautiful connectivity comes everywhere to everyone, much better. Uh, but uh, and every participant in this whole value chain and the and the solution product life cycle will have to consider security from a very holistic uh, perspective. Yeah. Okay. So let me just add uh, another uh, information <laughs> to this ongoing conversation. That is, uh, is uh, editor in chief of Journal of ICD Standardization, and some of the early publications on 5G uh, uh, standards, uh, standard releases from 3GPP as such have been published by this journal. 
and uh, security it has been one of those areas which have been quite extensively covered and i expect there'll be uh, there are, there are several more issues planned in the forthcoming issues uh, yeah. publications in the journal and the, you want to add something to that yes uh, uh, that's true it's uh, there are a phase two security aspects as well and and virtualization network function virtualization aspect uh, is there too we are, we have a new uh, one also coming on um, other enhancements associated to it like ai aspect is also published yeah and uh, i think we have quite a bit in our uh, cybersecurity magazine as well uh, on this uh, 5g and all the aspects associated too Yes, I think there will be more uh, articles on 5G security in general. Uh, thanks to you, Anand, already, uh, you already um, mentioned that there will be some articles by you uh, to get deeper into the topic. But I think for now, uh, uh, at least I had a very good overview, and uh, I'm actually looking forward to some more deeper discussions, uh, especially on things like IoT, IIoT, mission, mission critical things. Uh, because that is definitely something uh, which we didn't have before, neither with the 3G nor 4G, and I think yeah. that's what really uh, makes the difference from 5G to uh, yeah earlier uh, deployments of mobile networks and mobile security in that sense. True, true. I look okay. forward. To this. All right. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Well, uh, thank you very much, and uh, stay tuned. There'll be more uh, such podcasts coming. Uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Looking forward to communicate with you as well. Yeah. Thanks.